Hello and welcome to the Maths Doctor. In today's video we're looking at reflections. This is part one of three videos on reflection where we shall be focusing on a vertical mirror line like you can see here, a horizontal mirror line like that one, a diagonal mirror line uh, like this, and finally we'll be looking at what happens when you have more than one mirror line, in this case a vertical and horizontal mirror line. Um, you can also find a worksheet and solutions to accompany this video at my website. If you're watching from YouTube, I provided a link below the video. So let's find the first uh, example, which is this one. So here you can see we have a triangle, A, B, C, and it's very important to always label the vertices um, on, your, on your shapes or your objects that you're going to reflect. Um, and the convention is always to label the vertices. Now the vertices is basically the proper word for uh, corners. Um, it's always important to label your vertices in capital letters. So capital A, capital B, capital C is fairly standard. And um, it's also important when you do your reflection that you label the vertices of your reflection. And I'll show you the correct convention uh, when we reflect this shape here. Um, a word on the mirror line. So in this case, uh, the mirror line is in red and it's dashed. Now, mirror lines should really be dashed, but often you'll find in test textbooks they're not. They're often found solid. But in all the examples, I have a red dashed mirror line. Now, I'm also using um, a fantastic piece of software um, called GeoGebra. Now, it's actually a free piece of so software which I downloaded off the internet. And what I like about it is very powerful and I'm able to do dynamic examples, which means I can always move my shapes and move the reflections, um, which makes it much, much easier to understand. And if you're like me and you're a kinesthetic learner, um, then it really gives you the opportunity to, to get in the problem and play with the problem. And I think it's a um, far more effective way of learning. So what I'm gonna do is just uh, reflect um, this object here so you can see that A has become A dash now that's the correct way of labeling your vertices so B has become B dash and C has become C dash and as you can see as I as I move um, a vertex um, uh, the reflection moves as well which is very very nice you can see as I move point A onto the mirror line um, the reflection A dash is also on the exact same point. So of course um, I should ask the question what happens when you move a vertex beyond the mirror line? Well let's have a look. Well, there you go. So uh, it will just reflect against the mirror line um, no matter which side of the mirror line it's on. So it's really useful so you can sort of ask yourself all these sort of what if questions and then actually find the answer out for yourself. So that's a vertical mirror line. Now I'm going to quickly show you the um, reflection of all of these four examples. And then I'm going to go back to the first one again and show you what I consider to be the best way of doing it. So if you're given um, a worksheet in class or if you were um, doing um, a test and you had a question like this, I'll show you what I consider to be um, the best way of, of reflecting these shapes. So the second example, we have um, a four-sided shape, A, B, C, D. Um, so it's a quadrilateral. Oh, I just pressed the wrong one there. And this particular quadrilateral is called an arrowhead. And this time the mirror line is horizontal, so it's reflecting um, everything above the mirror line, below the mirror line. And I'll be going to greater detail how to do that one. Now let's have a look at the third example, which is um, much trickier, actually. And my students um, get into a little pickle on this one. So we have a diagonal mirror line. It's 45 degrees. Um, so sometimes it's beneficial if you just rotate your head 45 degrees. And it 
might make it easier to see where the reflection uh, will go. So let's have a look. So a horizontal rectangle actually um, gets reflected and it, and, it, and it goes into a vertical rectangle. So I'll be going into much more detail on how to do that one. And finally, uh, we'll be looking at uh, this particular quadrilateral four-sided shape. It's actually a kite, A, B, C, D. And we have two different uh, mirror lines. So firstly, we need to reflect it um, in the vertical mirror line. But then we have to reflect both of those in the horizontal mirror line. So we need to do that one and then that one. Now this is um, very, uh, very interesting when you take one of the vertices and start playing with it. You can see you get all four of your reflections or three of your reflections uh, move with it, which is, is quite satisfying. Um, it's particularly nice if I move um, into the middle and then beyond you get quite a sort of a, a psychedelic shape here and again for all the kinesthetic learners like myself this is a fantastic way to explore and, and get into the problem. So what we're going to do now is go back to the first problem and I shall show you the best way of doing it. So if we want to reflect uh, our first shape, ABC, about the vertical mirror line, um, all we're going to do is, is we're going to use the grids um, and we're going to count how many squares it is, for, let's say, from vertex A uh, to the mirror line. So um, I'm actually going to draw a line in each case, but of course you don't need to do this. Um, so that was obviously one square from A to the mirror line. So I'm just going to then repeat that one square for the mirror line reflected away uh, to that point there. Um, so this point here is where A dash will be and I'll put that in at the end. Um, so let's do the same for, for B. So B to the mirror line as you can see is two squares. So we're going to at this time move two squares away from the mirror line in the other direction. Um, so point B dash will go there. And let's do the same to C. So that C is one, two, three, for five squares along the grid to the mirror line. So we do five uh, reflecting the other direction. So that's two, four, five to that point there. So that's our three uh, points, which of course we just need to uh, join up, say uh, there, there, there. And if I go back again, it creates a polygon. So that is the, um, the reflection. So the last thing to do and something that's really, really essential is to label now A dash, C dash, and B dash. And um, let's do that there. And we've done it. So let's go back to um, the second uh, problem. And we're going to do the same thing, but this time we're going to be uh, counting downwards towards the mirror line. So from A is uh, one square along the grid, so we go one to there, that'd be point A dash. Uh, D, I mean, you can go any order you want, is uh, two down, so we're going to go two away to that point there. Uh, C is just one square to the mirror line, so it's one away. Oops, I'm just zooming out here. Uh, so it's one away, and Point B is interesting because this is following the same path as point D, but it's absolutely fine. So B is one, two, three points to the mirror line. So we're going to go over this line again. So three points will be there. So we know that our polygon will um, be on these four points. This is our arrowhead. And we know that they are what we call equidistant um, from the mirror line, equidistant distant means the same distance apart from the mirror line. And the last thing to do is to label the vertices. Um, so A dash, B dash, C dash, D dash. Lovely. Okay, so the next one's a little bit more challenging, which is the vertical, um, sorry, the diagonal uh, mirror line. So what we want to do this time, we are going to use the grid to count 
um, how many squares towards the mirror line, but we're actually going to go uh, diagonally because we always want to go the, the the sort of shortest path. Um, now you don't have to do. There is another way of doing it, but I find this the best way. So if I start with point A, um, we're actually just going half um, half a diagonal, aren't we, to um, the mirror line. So I'm going to do half the other way, and that will bring us to there. So this point here is going to be A dash. Now let's continue to oh, I've just zoomed out, zoomed in again. Um, let's do the same thing from B is one, one and a half. So I now need to go one and a half um, following the diagonal. So I really must go through the cross of each square. So that's the first half away from the mirror line and then one more. So that's one and a half away and put my dot there. So that would be B dash. Uh, now let's do point C, which is so it's one, two, three. So it's at exactly four. Very careful that I go through each diagonal, exactly through the cross of each diagonal. So that was four, so I must do the same. So it's one, two, three, four. At that point there will be C dash. And finally, D is one, two, three diagonals to the, to the mirror line. So it's one, two, three. So that's so that be D dash. Now it's my uh, favourite bit, which is uh, joining up the vertices of the polygon to make our reflected uh, rectangle. And there you have it. So of course I need to now label my vertices, uh, which I can do nice and easily like that. And fantastic. Say so, uh, there we have a nice reflection. Now the last uh, the last one is basically just a combination of um, the vertical and the horizontal, but you just need to know that you need to reflect it um, in all possible places. So it's just a bit of work involved here. So I'll probably whiz through this a little quicker. So A is one square there, so one square there. B is two, oh, a little bit of a issue I hope you oh no won't let me do that one because I've got this there we are now I can do it oh, getting into all sorts of problems here okay uh, we want a line segment say so B is two to the two to the C is three to the and three to the now I'm gonna do a bit of a shortcut in a moment so that's two squares there and two squares there. So I've got my first, I've got my first four points. So I can join, oh, this is in the way, let me just move this. See sometimes software can get a little fiddly. There, okay, there we are. So let's just do my first one. Okay, so we have a nice reflected kite. Um, now, quite often you, you don't need to go through that whole process. You can you can kind of see for yourself. Um, I mean, I, I I can see that from there to there is one one square away. So this point will be that point there. So I I kind of know that um, this point up here is through one two three jumps away. So that's one two three. I, I can see that that's there. And I can get a feel for where the other four points are because I'm just using my spatial skills. Ooh, zoomed in a little bit there. Let's see if I can zoom out again. There we are. So there we have it. And so, I mean, I've done millions of reflections um, over the years. So I'm sort of quite good at them. And I'm sure the more you do, the better you'll get. So I didn't need to go through all that process, but you get the idea. Um, of course, the last thing I haven't done is label my vertices, so I should just do that now. So that one goes there, and that one goes there. So there you have it. Um, what you really need is practice, and make sure you use a pencil and you use a ruler. Um, I'm sure your maths teachers 
will say the same thing. Um, firstly, it looks nicer, and secondly, if you do make a mistake, which uh, I'm sure you will, and it's absolutely fine because that's how you learn and um, and improve. If you make a mistake, you can of course rub it out and make your corrections. Um, but yes, do always use a ruler. There's nothing worse um, when students do it freehand because it just doesn't look right. And this particular topic um, comes under the the, the umbrella of um, transformations and all transformations topics are about accuracy um, so you want to make sure that you're going through exactly um, the crosses of the, of the squares on your grid for example um, and yeah you want it, you want it to you want it to look crisp um, and accurate and that's all part of this topic so Please download the worksheet I've provided on the website, have a go for yourself, and um, have fun. And if you found this video of, of value, um, you can show your appreciation by clicking uh, the donate link from my website, um, and donate any amount that you feel reflects the help that you have received. Thank you very much. Have